Okay. Hello. Good morning. Again, for me. For you, I don't know. It's a lot later than we usually get started, and by a lot later, it's like 10 a.m. Um, but that's just because we were out all day yesterday, and I was up pretty late uh, editing the last vlog, because there were all of these little 10 second or 5 second clips that needed to be adjusted and stitched together, and it's... It's fun, but it's fiddly work. So I was up uh, pretty late. I don't think we ended up going to bed until like, I don't know, 1230 or 1 last night. So we slept in this morning and we're just finally groggily getting out of bed. And the plan is to go and find some breakfast, drink some coffee, get charged back up. And then I think today is just going to be a going to the beach day. I think that's the plan for today. I think the plan is to put a towel on some sand and then put our bodies on those towels and just let the sun slowly kill us with radiation. Uh, which is strange. Humans do weird things on vacation. Um, but the plan is to relax while I'm being slowly irradiated. Uh, I have slathered myself in the sacred protective oils uh, so as to repel the deathiest parts of the sun's hateful beams. Uh, but I do crave the warmth of the sun, so it's a bit of a conundrum there. Um, so we're gonna do that, and and honestly, like I'm feeling a little, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit stressed to like do stuff. I'm feeling that like, oh, you're on vacation, do something, enjoy, enjoy it in a specific and tailored way, kind of anxiety, and it's it's silly. It's frankly just, it's ludicrous. So. I don't know how much kind of recording I'm going to do today. Uh, I, obviously, I'm me, so I'm not going to be able to go anywhere without a camera of some kind. But uh, I might try to, uh, to to leave some room for myself not to not to record everything that I'm doing. Um, so we'll we'll see. Um, the The plan is breakfast, beach, question mark. And then I think tonight we're gonna go and get dinner with my uh, with my parents. Now we're gonna go get Indian food. Now it's Sunday here now, and it's interesting. Uh, you know, being being in in Kona, being on the Big Island, in a lot of ways reminds me of growing up in Kelowna, which you saw some of if you watched last year's Vlogmas vlogs, right? I, I went home. To Kelowna and it's not just because I'm seeing my parents which is normally a contextual event that occurs uh, in Kelowna but because there's some small town syndrome going on the island of, uh, of Hawaii the big island has so so many churches on it I have. I was about to say I don't think I've ever been anywhere that has so many, but that's not true. I grew up in a place like that, and so it's really weird driving around and being like, church, 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 repurposed gymnasium that is now a church, and it, it's got me thinking a lot about the ways that we use religion to influence culture, right? Like obviously, but as a as a philosophical virus, as a as a meme. Religion's a real strong one. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, and we, we talked about this a little bit right before we got here, about like colonialism and the idea of uh, America's tendency to show up in places and be like, all right, the stuff you used to do, you're not doing that anymore. You're doing America stuff. Here's your McDonald's and your cable TV. And, and like, don't get me wrong, there's a time and place for McDonald's and cable TV, but since Hawaii has only been a state since what 1959 it all feels it feels so current and it's it's weird seeing all these churches and remembering like oh part of that ideological takeover is uh using religion among other things to alter the landscape of a community christianity is super good at this and by good i mean scary um, you know, they, they, they kind of, as a, as a, an edifice, they do this wherever they go where they're like, oh yeah, nice pagan rituals. We'll take those. Here's Christmas. Enjoy. Right. You recognize just enough of this to make it feel like familiar, but now you're, you know, tithing to this church instead of maybe spending money on your own community. And you're used to having 
people of authority that are maybe not like you and not of your culture, but now you're listening to them because they said if you don't listen to them, you're going to hell. And it's, it, you know, we know that this is a thing that we, we, we've we seen in history, right? This, this religious spread. And certainly Christianity does not have a, a, a universal handhold in this concept, right? You know, Buddhism has done it lots of times. Uh, you know, you see uh, Hinduism having spread in this way. Um, but Christianity takes the top prize for, like, most colonial of all religions, which is, like, a scary thing to, to sort of come face to face with. And seeing all these churches and being like, yes, they are built and they serve a community purpose, but you can't help but wonder, like, did the community need that purpose? Did they need... 17 million churches all pretty much aimed at the same god right when these were people that had their own religious practices and their own cultures it kind of reminds me of things that i've read about um you know scandinavia in the sort of uh late classical what we would call the dark ages when uh you know the the christians came and were like yeah you shouldn't be excited about thor anymore here's Jesus. He's like a cool guy. He likes fighting too, right? Now give us your money and come to church instead of, you know, wearing your, your Mjolnir necklace. It's a, it's a weird thing. And, and from a historical perspective, it's awkward and uncomfortable and strange. And from a kind of, um, understanding the world perspective and thinking about the ways that religion, and, and honestly, religion is just a flavor of philosophy, the way it impacts cultures and how those seeds of ideas get planted and, and spread around is is fascinating. I would love to read more about this subject. Like, I don't know, maybe maybe you are a, a, a better historian or a, a better religious scholar than I am, but if you have suggestions about like books I could read or movies to watch or podcasts about the ways that religion spreads and like how missionaryism kind of works and, and what effects it has on culture, I would love to read that stuff because I think that despite being a completely a religious person myself, right? I don't I don't feel a lot of pressure to to pay homage to the sky lord, but uh, I am interested in the idea of religion, the the sort of dogmatic spread of these ideas, and I've been thinking about it a lot driving around uh, on the uh, on the island and seeing all of these churches of various providence. Um, so if you have recommendations, hit me up. Uh, well, that got philosophical uh, pretty early. I'm not used to it being quarter after ten and having conversations about uh, ideology, but here we are. Uh, welcome to the vlog. Uh, instead of continuing down this this path of thought, uh, I'm going to pack up my gear and I'm going to go and get some breakfast and uh, I'm going to try to uh, unratchet the screws of stress that are slowly tightening on my brain. I'm on vacation. I need to give myself an opportunity to, to remember that. So I don't know, the, there may be some more of this later. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll record uh, some bits and pieces here and there. Um, but for the most part, I think today is going to be a pretty chill day. And then uh, tomorrow, we've got some more beach time, hanging out with my parents, going to some more petroglyphs, which we saw yesterday, which were super cool, and I didn't really get a chance to talk about. So I'm sure I'll talk about them a little bit tomorrow. But they're basically these like ancient Hawaiian carvings in the stone, all the way out on this lava field. And I don't know how old they are. I never got a chance to look them up, but it's amazing that both they are as old as they are. They are still in use by some of the, the native population of, uh, of the big Island. And, um, I do love a good creepy umbilical cord story. These, um, these petroglyphs, they, um, they would carve these these indentations in the lava field, and then when a newborn uh, baby was was born, uh, the baby and the mom and the family would all walk down to the petroglyphs, which is like very far. They'd walk down to these petroglyphs, and they would take the umbilical cord and they would place it in one of these indents uh, to connect the baby and the mom and the birth to the to the earth. And like I don't know, I I'm sure lots of people think they're the childbirth and families are like inherently kind of miraculous but i find babies super creepy most of the time and the whole idea of like having this weird ritual where you take a vestigial now unused body part and you leave it for the gods it's it's cool it's a it's weird and and primordial in a way that i think that a lot of 
uh, a lot of sort of modern Western religious practice shies away from. Come on, we need more blood and guts in our religion. Anyway, I'm gonna go. It's it's time it's time to leave. Stop rambling about petroglyphs and 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 dogma, and uh, go get some coffee and start your day, Adam. So uh, we will see you again either later today for a little bit more vlog, or um, or tomorrow for the same. Bye for now. It is now very much the evening, and as you can hear, the night sounds have settled in and I am exhausted. But I wanted to record just a little bit more at the end of the day before I go off to bed. Uh, as, uh, as I mentioned before, we went out to the beach today and it was a bit of a weird experience. I, um, I've been to the beach before. Put your swim trunks in the bag, get your towel sunglasses put some sunscreen on get out there sit in the sand enjoy the sun run around in the water you know I know I know how the beach works but I think I was expecting a relaxing time and we went to this really nice beach just a little bit north of the airport and I think everybody else who was there was there to have like a like a raucous time there was a lot of shouting and running and jumping and children and playing of sports and so I, you know, I tried to, to relax and read my book and absorb information about the Illuminati, but I just, I just couldn't do it. We were there for about two hours, and I, I just, something in my brain, I just felt super anxious that there were all these people around. I was worried somebody was gonna, I don't know, like, throw a football at me, or, I, I don't know what the deal was, but I just, I couldn't relax. So... Uh, we came back to the uh, Airbnb and uh, just like had a had a, a couple of minutes to get changed, and we went out and had dinner with my parents. That was much nicer. Um, but tomorrow uh, we're gonna visit a more secluded, bigger beach and try to get in some of that relaxing time. Um, so I, I imagine that'll happen. It's not too too late, but all this sunshine and all this vacation's tiring me out. So we'll, I'll probably end up going to bed pretty early. Um, I'm just going to edit up the vlog and put it on YouTube, and away we go. So this is what you get today. Uh, you, you get uh, me rambling about religion, and then you get some footage of the beach, and then this, and then that's it. And this is kind of just how Vlogmas goes. Some days they're, they're tightly focused experiential uh, views into what I'm up to, and other days they're kind of rambling and incoherent, so... The point, I think, of the of the Vlogmas experiment isn't to worry too much about it. That uh, we'll do another one tomorrow and we'll see where we end up. So far, Hawaii has been very kind to us. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. I've been eating lots of good food. Obviously, brilliant weather aside from that one day where it was raining. And, um... oh, I did want to mention, so last night, uh, last night on our drive back from Hilo, I don't, I don't think I had a chance to talk about this, we drove by the camp where all the protesters are for the telescope. We drove by there, and obviously it was, like, closed because it was the middle of the night, but uh, as we were driving back, it was so surreal because there's this road that cuts through the middle of the island, and the turnoff where the protests are happening is on that road, and I didn't know that. And we pulled up to a stop sign, and uh, all around on both sides of the highway, there were these, like, plastic sheets and uh, fences up, and there hadn't been any signage about the protest or about the telescope or anything like that. So we pulled up and it was like pulling into a 
like another world because it was all foggy and the, the lights were, were all glowing in the fog and there was like nobody else around and then all of a sudden we were in the middle of this camp of tents made out of like recycled plastic and actual tents and like it was like a little protest village which I've seen lots of times before right like this kind of constructed living environment is pretty normal for ongoing protest especially ongoing protest in areas that don't necessarily have like an urban center but it was very uh, strange to drive into and, and to the point where I didn't even realize what we were looking at until afterwards as we were driving out I was like oh that's the yeah, so very, very strange. Uh, interesting thing to drive through. I, I, I'm curious what it would look like during the day. I think probably a lot more obvious in its purpose, but a lot less surreal. And I like surreal, so. Speaking of which, I am going to go and, and continue reading my book, uh, which I am enjoying. I found out today, apparently, that uh, I know somebody who is the, the child of one of the authors of the book, which is really cool. Um, so that's neat. Small world. Or synchronicity. <laughs> anyway, it's late. I'm tired. I'm gonna go. Good night.